Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is Shiv and I hope you are keeping well and keeping safe. Uh, it's the most important thing that we can all do this time around. So um, today's topic is uh, a combination of two subjects that I had uh, done uh, a prior set of episodes on. One was the episode where I created uh, a light box using an Amazon you know, packing box with some foil and a uh, you know, piece of glass with uh, some tracing paper. If you haven't seen it, I'll, I'll put a link down to uh, that particular video. But I got a question, and the person who asked the question was quite right. I mean, the, the person said, you said it would be a cheap uh, light box, but you put two Lytra lights in there, and the Lytra lights are not cheap. And, so how is it a cheap light box? And uh, good question. And so I said, well, let me show you how you can do it without Lytra torches. Uh, if you have, and I, I didn't go out to do any shopping, but if you have a uh, LED, household LED lamp, which is nice and bright, uh, you can use that. Uh, attach it using any kind of a lamp holder, bulb holder. Uh, with with a cord and plug it in. So what I did was, and just to give you an example of what I created, I, I took a regular household LED, and this is a uh, GE HD uh, 800 lumen LED. Um, I wish I had a brighter LED. Uh, you can put two of them in here. As long as this thing doesn't get too hot, uh, you should be fine. If they get very hot, I would advise you go buy another LED because you don't want this box to start burning. Um, turn it on and drop it into the box. So let me just show you. Um, that's the overhead view. That's the box that we had made. And I'm just going to drop this LED in here. And now I have uh, a good light source that is being reflected and, and being sort of emitted upwards. Now, the next part of the project is uh, a concept called birefringence. Let me get back to this view. Uh, birefringence is nothing more than passing, and I'll turn this off because it's overly bright, uh, passing polarized light through polymers, plastics, uh, crystals, etc. And the refraction that takes place is dual. Uh, most refraction uh, using standard light is a single refracted ray that comes out of the subject. But when you hit a subject uh, that is a polymer or a crystal with polarized light, you get two rays of refraction, a primary uh, or the main ray of refraction, and then a second bit of refraction, which is the enhanced uh, refraction or uh, you know, a refraction that is at a completely different angle from the main refracted light. Now, when that refraction takes place, what it's really going to refract from is the areas of stress that are in these polymers. Plastic, spoons, knives, forks, uh, any kind of a injection molded plastic uh, product will have in the molding process a significant amount of stress. And that's the stress that you'll be able to see in the form of refracted colors. So what I did is I took the same box that you've seen, and then I added to it, and I put the same you know, tracing paper on top. The glass that I was using, which was from a box um, picture frame, I took a piece of construction paper and I cut out a window so that I could support the uh, film, which is the linear polarizing films, the same film that I used in a previous episode, and I'll put a link uh, to that, which is on cross-polarization. Cross-polarization basically used to eliminate uh, specular highlights, uh, bright areas, uh, reflected surfaces, and, and whatnot. So I've taken one of those sheets and I've uh, you know, stuck it on with some scotch tape and uh, some packaging tape, and we can now put that on top. So let me just show you uh, what it looks like um, as 
it is and has been placed. Now you're getting some reflection from the camera above, but that's okay. Um, in order to get this live, we're going to have to turn the, the light on and get this up on top and frame it reasonably well so that you can get a good idea of what it is that I'm seeing. So in this situation, we have uh, light that is coming through and that light is being polarized and coming out as polarized light. I have here a plastic spoon and I'm going to place the plastic spoon on top of this light box. And you can see it's reflecting through. It's just a regular uh, plastic spoon. I have some more objects. Um, you know, this is a corn on the cob holder. I'm going to put that on top. And as you can see, it's going to reflect just as any normal uh, plastic piece would. The, the, the refraction, the, the refraction, the birefringent you know, uh, capabilities or the birefringence from this subject or these subjects can only be really viewed if you now repolarize the light that is coming up from the subject or coming through the subject. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is set up another camera with a macro lens and a polarizer, and I'm just going to put it on top of, of this light source. So very quickly, let me just get that lined up. And now I have, as you can see, a camera that is pointing down to the light source um, so that I can now show you what this camera sees. So in order to show you what that camera is seeing, here is the spoon on the light. And let me focus that for you. Get it to the edge. Sorry, the arm that the camera is on is not inordinately stable, but just to give you an idea of what this birefringence is doing as far as this particular plastic spoon is concerned. Now, there's something else that uh, is very interesting. This concept of birefringence allows you to do, uh, you know, really interesting types of photography. If I move this over so you can see some more of the background, and uh, this is the, the handle of the spoon, and, and sorry, it's, uh, it's vibrating as it most objects tend to do. Um, what we have here, and once again, let's just get the focus in, in place. All right. So what we have is, as you can see, the light coming through the spoon, and you have a very dark background, practically black as far as the background is concerned. Let me change the polarization and rotate the polarizer. As now you can see, you're getting all of the light. In fact, you can see the brightness coming through. Uh, and then if I turn it back, there goes the background and it's now a dark background or a black background. If you're familiar with neutral density filters, and I will be doing a full uh, session on uh, neutral density filters, if you are familiar with how a neutral density filter works, you know that as you rotate the filter, uh, the amount of uh, light transmission reduces till you get to a point where you get some very strange artifacts. But if you had true cross polarization, this is the concept where one filter rotates against the other. And as that rotation takes place, it gets darker, less transmission, less transmission till it gets completely black. Those are light rays that are coming through and being blocked. But in this case, 
the standard light rays that are coming through are being blocked because you've got one polarizer that has polarized the light and the, the light is perfectly aligned. And if you cross polarize it, you completely eliminate all of the light and thereby the uh, background becomes dark. The subject that you're actually photographing is refracting light. So the direction of the light coming through the subject isn't the same as the direction of the light that's coming from the background. Thereby, you will still be able to see the uh, main subject while the background goes totally black. Conversely, let me just uh, put this back to this view. Conversely, if you bring it to a point where you can start seeing the background and the background gets brighter and brighter, what you will see over time as, it, as we continue to move it, that the effect of birefringence kind of goes away. It doesn't go away entirely because there are still angular structures of the object, but the birefringence continues to reduce as more and more light is transmitted in the same direction. So what, what looks really nice is, you know, this kind of a dark background where the subject is glowing through it. Um, let's just take that corner on the carb and, and show you what that looks like. Uh, as you can see, these are all various stress points that are, uh, you know, refracting in these various uh, directions. And you can see all of these uh, really uh, colorful images. Um, one more, uh, if, you, if we take um, a piece of plastic, and this is uh, nothing more than uh, a broken piece of a plastic drinking cup. If I was to put this drinking cup into uh, this scenario, what's going to happen is you're not necessarily going to see um, any colors, real colors. If I rotate this, you can probably see that the colors are changing, going away, but uh, none of that uh, real craziness. But if I bring it to a stress area, which is closer to the base, you can see how dark that blue has gone and how intense uh, the, the coloration is. So you have to have areas of stress uh, in your subject to be able to, to get a good visual of uh, birefringence. And lastly, this, uh, this is nothing more than a cocktail toothpick with some uh, baubles on the end. And let's go back here and put that down. And as you can see, uh, it's you know pretty interesting form of, uh, of birefringence. Get back into focus. There we go. And then I can add a spoon laid backwards. Probably another one over here, and and add some you know effects and you know, change the artifacts that are cre being created, and and uh, you know you could spend hours having fun, uh, you know find objects at home, place them on, and see what uh, the impact is. You'll have a lot of subjects that will create absolutely no coloration whatsoever, but yet on the other hand, you may have a lot of very interesting uh, pieces of. Uh, plastic that are laying around. You can also use certain crystals experiment if you have some crystals at home. Uh, try that out. The concept of birefringence is used to determine flaws in diamonds, uh, flaws in other, other materials. But uh, you know, from a photographer's point of view, um, anything we can do that is a little unique, a little different, uh, can always be a lot of fun. So. Uh, you know, with that, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, uh, do give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, uh, please do so. Um, you know, and once you've subscribed, you'll get that uh, notification icon. Click on that. It's, uh, you know, just another no notification that will tell you that I've created uh, something uh, that may be of interest to you. And if it is, great. Um, so with that, thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. In all probability, I think I'm going to cover the filters in the next episode, unless something else comes by. But uh, that's uh, what we'll cover the next time. So keep safe, keep healthy, keep well, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode.
Take care and bye for now.